Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to trim your CNC. And today I'm going to be doing this on the Blue Carve Bluey. But the steps are pretty much the same for the X Carve and other CNCs like that as well. So tramming is essentially leveling your CNC. Now not leveling the bed to the ground, but more leveling the router or the spindle to the, to the uh, actual gantries of the CNC. Now to know if you need to tram your CNC, one of the big symptoms is when you flatten your wasteboard, you get these ridges like this, and these are actually uh, different heights, you can actually feel the ridges. It's not just looks, you can actually feel it. Other ways to point this out is you could be engraving for instance, and it only engraves half of what you're trying to do, and you can clearly see that the bit is just not not hitting where it needs to hit because it's gone uh, higher than the, than the other side. Now there's two different axes you need to worry about. That is the Y axis and the X axis. The X axis is the top of the CNC, which is where the actual router is mounted to and that moves across between the two Y rails. And the Y axis is from front to back of the machine across the two Y rails. Now to trim your CNC, you're going to need the spanners for your router to put a bit in. You're going to need a flattening bit for after we finish the tramming to flatten your spoil board. You also should have flattened your spoil board before doing the tramming to begin with. You will need a clamp for the Y axis and I'll get to that later on. And for the Bluey, you're going to need two Allen keys, one for the bolts on the front of the router holder and one that fits in the bolts that hold the X axis to the Y axis. Now the other thing you're going to need is a six millimeter length of round steel or aluminium. Now I'm using aluminium and you want to cut a piece and bend it the same shape as this. Now it doesn't matter if it's not completely perpendicular between here and here. The main thing is that it's solid and it can't bend with the flex of the machine if it hits the bed. Now you want to install the bent piece of metal into the router like you would a normal router bit. Okay, now I've drawn these numbers on here just to help explain a lot easier of what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, so I'm going to go around and work out where it looks a lot higher and it looks like number three. So I'll, bring, I'll take the piece of metal around to number three, bring the X axis down or the, bring the router down to it's just about to touch. And now if I bring the metal around, you'll see it's starting to catch already here. Same on this side, it's starting to catch near the 12 and near the six. So that tells me that the router is turned this direction and we need to rotate it this way. So what we need to do is we need to loosen the bolts that hold the router to the actual gantry. So the router carriage. Now we only want to release three out of the four bolts. And as I said before, the four bolts that I am, I am loosening, or three out of the four bolts that I'm loosening, are these four bolts here on the front of the router carriage. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring the router up to where, to bring it around to number nine, and I can just grab the router and lift it up just that little bit. Now, if I bring it around to number three, that looks about the same, but what we'll do is we'll bring it back down to just as it's about to touch, which is right there. If we bring it around, it is the same distance. Yep, we'll just come back this way a little bit. And that is the same distance between nine and three. So we can tighten those bolts back up. Now you will notice that there was a little bit of scrubbing there, but that was on the six. And that is our next step is to do the Y gantry, which will eliminate that. Okay, now for the Y axis. Now for the Y axis, what we're gonna do is we're going to bring the router over to one side. And we will see that 
is currently hitting on the number six side, but not on the number 12 side. So we're going to loosen three out of the four bolts on the end that hold the X axis to the Y axis. And then we're going to take our clamp and we're going to clamp it onto the X axis or the X axis gantry. Now what we want to do is we want to bring the router down a little bit and then we're going to lift with the clamp until it's not hitting on this side on the six and make sure that it's not hitting on the 12 it is a little bit so we can bring it down a little bit it's about the same then we can tighten these bolts back up All right, now that we've done that, we're going to move the router to the other side and repeat the same steps on the other side. All right, now that I've finished trimming the CNC, I know that I can spin this around and it is not touching anywhere. It's the same distance all around. If I lower it just that little bit, you'll hear it scrape the whole way around. Now what I wanna do is put the flattening bit in the router and go through the process of flattening my spoil board. All right, that is it. The spoil board is now completely smooth and it is that simple. So just a couple of bolts and a couple of minutes and you're pretty much done. I think all up it took me about five minutes and then actually flattening the spoil board. And it's that simple. Once you do it, you shouldn't really have to do it again. Uh, if you do like maybe once a year or something or however often you choose to do it, but you really shouldn't have to do it again once you've done it, done it the first time. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe button down below. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And down below, you'll also find links to my social media and a link to my podcast. And I'll see you next time.